Hello and welcome to another edition of Weather Weenies. It's the holiday edition and the first thing I want to do this week is explore the reasons why we had a little weather hiccup the day after Christmas in the eastern half of the country. If you remember from last week's version, we had a big storm that was headed into the Great Lakes and boy it was a big storm and it went right where we thought it would, west of Chicago. So Chicago got rain, lower Michigan got some rain on the resorts there. The upper peninsula got a mix of snow and sleet and everything else. The heavy snow fell in the Dakotas, down through Nebraska and Iowa. Not a lot of ski hills there, but uh, they had plenty of snow. Now, ordinarily a storm of that magnitude would continue up into the Great Lakes and it would die somewhere up in Canada and the upper level trough that supported it would swing to the east coast and we'd get a secondary low along the mid-Atlantic coast. And that's what I thought would, what would happen, and it did to a degree. But because there's such a strong block, B-L-O-C-K, nice handwriting, huh? A big blocking uh, pattern over Canada and over to the North Atlantic, that low pressure system got up to the western Great Lakes and it just basically went in circles for a couple of days. It maintained its strength for a while, and as it did, it pumped warmer air up the eastern seaboard. And by the time the secondary low started to form, and that was on uh, Saturday, the 26th, later on Saturday, unfortunately, enough low-level mild air and mid-level mild air had flooded northward all the way into New England that there wasn't enough cold air, and enough of a vertical slice of cold air to support snow. So we had rain in the mid-Atlantic, rain up through Pennsylvania. When you got to New York State, there was some ice and then some rain. Northern New England had some snow, some sleet, they had everything. But in, in the end, nobody really netted a lot of snow from that storm. And that's why the packed powder surfaces in the Great Lakes and in the Southeast and the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast were converted to something a little more dense for the 27th and 28th. But luckily, an Arctic cold front came through earlier this week and it barreled all the way to the Eastern seaboard and it set off snow showers and uh, some lake effect snow squalls and those squalls went all the way to the coast as well and it's a good thing because that has helped to soften up the surfaces in the eastern half of the country so much of the holiday week has been cold there's been some snow in a lot of areas and in the west we had enough of a trough to support some snow on the eastern slopes of the rockies early in the week and the energy from that system is now moving as we head to the latter part of this week. You're seeing this on Thursday or Friday. It's headed into the southeast, and that's where things get kind of interesting because last week we talked about the potential for a significant snow event on or about New Year's Day. That is still on the table, although it is a very complex situation, and whether or not all the pieces come together to produce a major snowstorm up the northeast corridor remains to be seen. And, and I'm not spending all of my time talking about the east because I don't like people in the west, but by and large, we still have a ridge at the upper levels in the western part of the country. Occasionally, a little energy comes out of a trough in Alaska and it dents the ridge and brings some light snow to the west. But right now, this pattern is not set up to allow a major Pacific storm to come ashore. It just can't bust through the ridge. So there'll be light snow in the west until further notice. There is some sign that around the 4th or 5th or 6th of January, we could get a strong trough through the south that could bring uh, significant snow to the central and southern Rockies, the southern Sierras, but uh, that's a little far off right now. I can see that happening, but in the meantime, I'm gonna focus on the east because Let's go back to the potential for this New Year's Day storm. We are going to have energy coming through this trough. It's gonna be plenty cold up and down the eastern seaboard for snow by the end of the holiday week. If all of this energy gets bundled into one storm, we will have a significant storm that moves up the coast, heads for Cape Cod, and it could even be a repeat of the blizzard or close to it that we saw a couple of weeks ago. That's kind of a long shot. What I think is going to happen is a couple of separate packages of energy are going to come around and form low pressure centers here in the mid-Atlantic, and they're going to go up and spread light to moderate snow in the corridor from the North Carolina mountains all the way up into New England. In New England, the storms will have intensified enough in the waters south of New England, and I'm trying to draw an L here, and I've made an absolute mess of this map, which shows you how much artistic talent I have. The storms will be a little stronger when they get up by New England. So in upstate New York and in New England, I think by the time we get to the first part of the first week of the new year, that's what, the 4th of January, there could be a foot to a foot and a half of new snow in those mountains from a persistent light to moderate event that starts on New Year's Eve and runs right through the weekend. The amounts will be lighter as you move down the Appalachian mountain chain, but that snow will fall and we're going to see a return of packed powder surfaces all the way down into the mountains of North Carolina. 
The cold air will continue to come across the Great Lakes. Now the lake waters are getting warmer, are getting colder as, as the season deepens. So the effect of, of lake effect snow, the contrast you're looking for between 5,000 feet and the, and the temperature of the water, it's starting to shrink. So you don't have the, the, the potential for the explosive lake of, effect events, but there will be lake effect snow flying uh, over the course of the next two weeks because cold air is going to dominate east of the Mississippi until further notice. This blocking pattern over Canada and out over Greenland, it spells cold weather for the eastern half of the country and there are no signs of that blocking pattern breaking down right now. So look for the cold to continue to dominate in the east. Look for the ridge to continue to dominate in the west with the occasional intrusion of some energy from the Pacific. It doesn't look like there'll be big storms in the west for a while yet. We'll keep an eye on that. The focus of the snow in the near future is going to be on the East Coast, and the first weekend of the new year has the potential to bring some powder skiing to portions of the East. That's it for this week's edition of the Weather Weenies. Happy New Year to you, and we'll check in with you next time from Wyndham Mountain in the Catskills next week.